Good morning, and welcome to Plantation SDA Sabbath School. It is so awesome to be here and to be able to study, be studying along. This with today we're going to be studying lesson number seven, the covenant with Abraham. I am Dion Walden, and I will be your host. I would like to introduce the panelists. To my right, I have Sister Gertrude Tone. Welcome. And uh, Sister Angela, Elder Angela Smith. Good Welcome. morning. Thank you. Welcome. Right. If you'd like to study along with us, you could go to ssnet.org and you can follow along with the Adult Sabbath School or you could check in with a local Seventh-day Adventist church. They should have some quarterly. So we're on lesson number seven, and I'm, I'm, I think this is going to be a real dynamic discussion. Um, last week, we'll recap a little bit about last week about this covenant with this 75-year-old man that God called, and through him, we see God's universal plan of his redemption, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, Sister Angela, would you open us with us in prayer? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to be able to open up your word. We pray for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit as we unfold your message with your beautiful, amazing covenant to fa through our Father, Father Abraham. This is my prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I, I just for those, you know, I think, you know, for in our church circles, we hear the word covenant. And I think some people get intimidated. I think covenant, what's a covenant? You know, you keep talking about covenant. So a covenant is like a contract. It is a contract. But this contract that God made with man, it is a unilateral contract. I mean, we didn't do anything. God initiated this contract with man. And so last week, we we saw where God's overall plan since the fall of man in the book of Genesis, we saw that the first messianic prophecy of him sending a redeemer to bring back man into relationship with him was made in Genesis 3 verse 15. And so ever since the fall of man and man's waywardness to God, God has always actively worked through human instrumentalities to bring people back to him. And so we will see in the, 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 uh, the, the ensuing days in this week's lesson, God's universal plan of redemption. So on Saturday, it talks about the covenant with Abraham. So this is like a second covenant because God had a covenant also with Noah. So the earth was vile. It was wicked. God judged it. He came down and saw that people continuously did wickedly and he grieved that he made man. But as he's such a merciful and loving God, he had a remnant. So he had Noah and his family, so we had, eight, and his three sons and their wives and his wife, so eight people, eight souls were saved, and they were given the same divine commandment to go and repopulate the earth. And through that, we have through the lineage of um, one of Noah's son, we see Abraham, who God chose. And so... There was nothing super special about Abraham when God chose him. He lived in the Ur of the Chaldees, and in modern day, it's actually in um, southern Basra, in, in Mesopotamia, in, in Iraq. And he called him out. They were a group, they, he lived among the Hamites, and these people were idolatrous people. So when the call came and said he should come up and get out of his country, you know, one thing that maybe we, I, I'm not sure if our moderator and the panelists did cover last week, that the Aura of the Chaldees, that was like the, the central place of civilization at that time. They were so mathematically advanced. They're culturally advanced, scientifically advanced. You know, actually, um, archaeological findings show that they actually had um, well-constructed bathrooms in those times. You think about 3,000 years ago. So Abraham was very wealthy, his family, and he had to get up and leave. That like He obeyed God in instantaneously. He got up and he left. 
And God told him, and we will see now where God is making this covenant, but God told him that he was going to bless him and all the families of the earth will be blessed. And that's wonderful to note when he said all the families of the earth. So just from one family, all families. So that is the plan of God from ever since to bring all nations back to him. So not just the Hebrew nation, but the Gentile and the Hebrew nation to come back to him. So this, this Abrahamic covenant that he made is a part of God's everlasting covenant. And you will see us using this synony synonymously with the everlasting covenant is also God's covenant of grace offered to all humanity. In Saturday's memory text, it says, but Abraham said, so when the Lord called him, he had doubts. He said, but Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. So he was like, Lord, you're, you're saying that I am going to be a father. And we will see the name change, a father of nations, father of multitudes. But right now I have no biological heir. The, the, the heir that I have is my servant. But God had a bigger plan. God always had a bigger plan. So at, the, at the, the age of 75, he was called to be among, to called out from among his family, left everything, social stability to go and to live a nomadic life. And we look now over this 25 year time span, <laughs> 25, so since a promise. So we look at some of the things that he grappled with at that period of his life, where we see, um, that there was human sensitivity with him, that, you know, um, there was fear and laughter with him. There was a lot of fear. And, you know, we want to talk about, you know, sometimes people tell you not to, fear, not, not to be fearful. But as a Christian, as a believer, he was fearful, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's, it's only, it's a natural, hum yeah, emotion to have fear. So we'll see. But he was fearful, but he had faith. So he had faith because it was accounted to him as righteousness. So we see here where, where, where the plan of redemption was playing out in Abraham. Some of his characteristical traits that when, when the angel came down, when the angels came down to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and this is just setting up for the discussion on Saturdays, it says that he showed human sensitivity. He was passionate about interceding yeah. for his nephew Lot, and not only his nephew, for the wicked city of Sodom. And as people of God, that is what is telling us that we need to have the spirit of intercession and also plead to God for the wicked. Amen. And so it is so important because it says here in the last part of um, Saturday's setup, set up, in, 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 it is in this context that Abram, and his name wasn't changed, Abram, whose name implies nobility and respectability, will have his name changed into Abraham, which means father of nations. So in Genesis 17, verse 5, it said, Thus we see here more hints of the universal nature of what God's plan to do through his covenant with Abraham. So we see here that through Abraham, God was going to change the destinies of the nations. Isn't that amazing? Amen. That is so amazing that through Abraham's one man obedience, one, look at that, one man's obedience changed the course of the whole world. Amen. One man's. So how does that apply to us as individual? The decisions we make, mm -hmm. how it impacts other people's lives. You want to comment on that, Sister Gert? To just say something because the decision you, we make right now impact our children. Yes. And the future generation. Yes. So if I love Pastor Jane, <laughs> sermon, if we make right now good decision, our children will follow. The blessing will come on them, not only their generation, but generations to come. Amen. Amen. That is so wonderful. Amen. And it's so wonderful because as you said, but you know, how we can impact and teach our children, cultivate, inculcate in them good qualities, righteous qualities. And it's so wonderful that Abraham, his father, was an idol worshiper, but he was different from his dad. 
He was different because when Joshua spoke, said, listen, don't go boast like you guys. You have nothing super spiritual. That's why God called you. You guys were idol worshipers, right? And that is where we have to look, where God has brought, how far we were from God. Because sin is a chasm that separates us from God. But when he calls, if he calls you right there and then, he's reconciling you. And this is the whole plan, the redemptive plan, this global plan. It's universal in nature, but it's also so individual. It's so personal because it is a personal call to us. And so we also look at Abraham also. We'll talk about the law of hospitality. That when the angels, they came home, he was eager to, to minister to their needs and to bring them refreshments. So as we turn over to Sunday's lesson, it talks about the faith of Abraham. And in the interest of time, we won't be able to go through everything. But let's look at Genesis 15. And I just want to read the first five verses. And this is really um, to set up the formal agreement, the covenant agreement that God, so in, 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 in Genesis 12, God promised him that he's going to make his nation great, that he was going to bless him. So there were some covenants blessing that God says, but God wanted to ratify. He wanted to formalize, no, this agreement with Abraham and this unilateral says, there's nothing, there's no quid pro quo here. It's God's initiating it. All the conditions is, are are, are to respond in obedience. And we see that he has already responded in faith, which is accounted to him um, as righteousness, credited to him as righteousness. So let's look at ver, um, ver, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 to 5. I'm reading from the King James Version. It said, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid. And I'm so loving God that he tells Joshua, he tells Moses, now he's telling Abraham, do not be afraid, Abraham. I can say something very quickly about yes. this verse. Yes. Do you know in the Bible there are 365 verses that said, do not be afraid. Isn't that amazing? One for each yes. day. Yeah. Do not yeah. be afraid. Yeah. Do not and, be afraid. And, and the reason it is a natural tendency for us to be afraid yeah. because we're in the presence of a holy, mighty God. And, you know, we, we, we just freeze at times. But God tells us, you know, he sets the pace. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. And thank you, no, thank you for bringing that out, that over 300 times, do not be afraid. Because right here, he's uncertain. He's, he's uncertain of the future, so he's like, okay, Lord, I'm worried. You're telling me from me it's going to come nations of people, and I have a servant here. So right. God is like, don't be afraid. So don't be afraid. He said, I am. He says here, um, going back to the 15, mm -hmm. I am your shield, yes. your exceedingly great reward. Mm -hmm. How comforting. Amen. 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 And I love that. I love that. I want to say amen because amen. I can't read these things and just be yeah, passive about it. it. I have to be emotive Put about it. I am your shield, mm -hmm. your exceedingly great reward. And we are benefactors. Mm -hmm. So God yes. is our shield yes, and our exceedingly great, I love the superlative, exceedingly great reward. Right. There's power there when I read that. Mm -hmm. It's about Abraham said, Lord, this is where he's concerned well, about the future. Future. Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Mm -hmm. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, mm -mm. This one shall not be your heir. Not at all. But one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven yes. and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. This is so amazing because yes. right now, you know, with the scientific discoveries of the cosmos, they're re recognizing that there are billions and billions and billions of galaxies, not just stars, galaxies, undiscovered galaxies. I was watching this program, Nova and um, um, PBS, and the, one of the, the narrator says that, that the number of stars in the sky 
outnumber the grains of sands on all the beaches wow. in the world and all the desert sands. So just to think about what God is like saying in the scale and the scope of the promise I'm giving you that your descendants are going to be as the number of the stars in the heaven. And so he says, and he believed, six, and he the believed Lord. in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness, belief, faith. And this is where, for us, we teach one of our cardinal teachings in the Seventh-day Adventist Church is righteousness by faith. Yes. And so we're going to see the, flesh, the fleshing out of righteousness by faith, that mm -hmm. there's nothing that you can possibly do to earn his goodness. Yes. It is a gift in itself in Ephesians 2 verse 8, that it is a gift of God. So all we need is to believe. The question is asked, how does Abraham reveal what it means to live by faith? What is the meaning of the sacrifices that God had, had Abraham to perform? So God, in the, in the, 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 the uh, covenant ritual, he told Abraham in the rest of the um, chapter 15 what he needs to bring, the different animals that he needs to bring, sacrifice. and then what God did in initiating this covenant. He cut all the animals in two pieces, and that was really in the, in the ancient times, to, it was a call to cut a covenant, to make a covenant. It was a blood covenant. So he actually had him, the, the, the animals split except, except for the birds. And then, then he put him in um, a deep sleep, and I think we'll talk about that. But what really struck me was, um, I, and the, I actually preached a sermon some years ago about the covenant, so you know, I, I love covenant about that. But it says that God was so sure about this because for in the ancient time, it was so serious to make a covenant. So by splitting the animal in two, the, the consequence of you breaking the covenant, this is what would happen to you. Mm -hmm. So God Almighty is like saying, but then in, 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 in Hebrews 6 verse 13, he says that God could not swear by the heavens because he created the heavens. He couldn't swear by the earth because he created the earth. He said he swore by himself. He swore by himself of this covenant, which is really Jesus Christ. It, it typifies Jesus Christ coming to ratify this blood covenant. And I see you're itching over there, Sister Girl. I'm saying I, I love it because that means if he swear by himself, I will respect this. I am faithful enough. I'm yes. not a man to yes. lie. Yes. I will do it. Yes, yes, yes. That is amazing, Sister Angela. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm just looking back, the fact that now he's bringing in the stars. First, it, it was the dust of the ground. Now it's the stars. And as we continue further on, it's going to show us the uh, sand of the sea, or sea of the sand. Uh, it, it took a little fate for Abraham himself to leave from, you know, that corrupt lifestyle. But as he travels, we see here how God's building on his fate. So he'll get to that point, ultimately, as we come to the end of the lesson, we'll see where he'll offer his son yes. as a sacrifice. Yes. So amazing. it's such a beautiful it lesson. It is amazing. It is amazing in itself as it's, he's like he reassured him, do not be afraid. Sister Gertie alluded to that over 300 plus times. Do not be afraid. And, and said because Abraham believed in 15 verse 6 because he understood that the fulfillment of God promised it depend not on his own and I'm just reading just um, just um, glancing over Sunday's lesson May 8. He said um Believed in the Lord, Genesis 5, 6, because he understood that the fulfillment of God's promise depend not on his own righteousness, but on God's. And then it says here that the, basically the sacrifice, so the animals that he had asked, he said the sacrifice points to Christ's death for our sins. Humans are saved by grace, the gift of God's righteousness symbolized by these sacrifices. So there was this covenant ceremony mm -hmm. which had specific messages. And there was one point where it became prophetic. Two pr pr prophecies were foretold in, in this covenant ceremony. The first one was that the praying of the vultures on the sacrificial animals mean that his descendants. Yeah. So even though he called him out of the land of Ur, took into Canaan. It's so amazing. He called him into Canaan. 
Canaan. He was dwelling in Canaan, they promised land, but then the people went into Egypt, into bondage, and here he's prophesying that After for four generations, years. so for 400 years, years mm -hmm. that Abraham's descendants will be in bondage, yeah. but then they will return. So it's yeah. a prophecy, but also a promise also that even though they will be in bondage for over 400 years, they will be return. Yes. And then the last sacrificial scene was where God... Um, basically manifested himself that so the last sacrificial sermon is dramatic it's a burning torch that passed between those pieces this extraordinary wonder signifies God commitment as we talk about to fulfill the covenant promise of giving land to Abraham and in that agricultural society land was very important land signified security stability and future family yes and so, so we see here where he was giving him the geographical boundaries of this land, you know, just like the Garden of Eden. He did the, the parallel with the Garden of Eden that, that um, the land would from the river of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates remind us of the boundary of the Garden of, of Eden. So there are also these prophetic things that God is showing, but not only that, I wanted to highlight before we go over on Monday, and I turn it over to you, Sister Gert. It says here, which I want us to really make, you know, just to see the parallels and just really all the, the foreshadowing that it is so multi-layered and multi-expansive. Here it says that um, this prophecy has therefore more in view, just the, not the, um, more in view than just the exodus of the homeland of Israel. So the people coming back to that um, earthly promised land, Canaan, was not what God's ultimate end goal was. Mm -hmm. On the distant horizon of this prophecy, in Abraham's descendant taking the country of Ab Ab um, Canaan looms the idea of the end time salvation of God's people who will return to the Garden of Eden. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Land coming right back, full circle, coming right back from the fall of man coming right back. And so now I'm going to turn it over to you, Sister Gert, and the, um, the spotlight Monday's lesson, Abraham's Doubt. All right, thank you, Sister Dion. And if you read Monday, Monday lesson, Abraham, he has doubt. And this is what tells me, as a human being, he was impatient. And many of us, when we start praying and we pray and we pray and nothing happened, we become impatient. And this is exactly what happened to Abraham and Sarah. They could not wait anymore. Sarah was old. She passed the time when she could have children. She was 65. So if, if, when you are 65, you don't think that you can have any child. You don't think so. So what she did, she took the matter into her own hands. And she told Abraham, let's go to Hagar. And you know the, the, the rest of the story. One of the things that is important for me in that lesson, God is the God that can do the impossible. Amen. He can do the impossible. One of the verse I have, I told that this morning in the pray, uh, prayer. I had that verse, Jeremiah 22, 27, that said, I am the Lord of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? Because now, Abraham and Sarah, they doubt about it. They took the matter into their own hands, and then they have consequences. Ishmael, he was not the promised child. Isaac was. But apparently that worked. Hagar became pregnant, gave a child. But God did not forget Hagar. He saw her when Sarah asked her to go to leave, because he was making fun of Sarah. Making fun of Sarah. Sarah asked her to leave the house, and God saw her. And God have pity on Hagar. And he also bless her child. Mm. That's telling me too as a human being, when I make mistake, when I cannot wait patiently, God can still have mercy on me and be merciful on me and give me an, another chance. One of the things also, why God did not tell Abraham, you and Sarah didn't believe me, I'm going to another family. Because he's faithful. Yes. He promised that I will give you a child. And he still respect that promise. I remember if I can go a little bit further quickly. I got married in my late 20s. And I suffered from endometriosis all my, all my life. When I saw my doctor in New York, we got married. I mean, Fred is listening. My husband is listening. The doctor said, you can have a child. You have 50% chance of having a child. What happened to me? Mm. My heart started racing because I was not so sure. 
Like Sarah, I believe Sarah, that's exactly what happened. She was not sure she could have a child anymore because she was too old. But God did it for her. And if you are watching Sabbath School right now, if you are facing any problem, any difficulty, something that looks impossible, the lesson is telling us God is faithful. He can do the impossible for you. He did it for many women, many women that cannot have children in our time. He did it for them. He can do it for you too. Whatever it is, whatever problem that you are facing, God can do the impossible because he did the impossible for Sarah and Abraham. Amen, amen. amen. I, I love just want to yes. chime in uh, uh, with um, Abraham. My question is, why didn't he listen to God? Why did he heed to his wife? So, you know, so um, let, let's just, let's just yeah. look at it. Let's just yeah, look at it. This is 10 years after the problem. Yes, no, I know. No, just look at it. Mm -hmm. so think about, you put yourself in Sarah's shoes, because I put myself. Yes. 10 years after. Mm -hmm. So Abraham was 75, she was 65. No, no, she's 75, he's 85. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, would you not start to have doubt? Yeah, but. I, w I personally would want to have, um, start to have doubt. Yes. And the, the, the lesson even puts it that Sarah was active, just like Eve was active. Yeah. And Abraham was passive, just like Adam was passive. Yeah. So it sort of so. show you that this is it, but it also is a bigger ramifications that this is them trying to help God out. Oh, How many exactly. times we try to work, work you know, you know we, we do performance works and think that that can equate. So this is really showing you the human dilemma that we're always trying to help God out. But guess what? We're always messing things up. Absolutely. But God always works it out. So even though we mess it up, he somehow find a way to bring it. So yeah. it wasn't, you know, think about a society like that because we're in the 21st century and we can't even think. It's not even first century, way back. Right in the ancient Near Eastern time, when not to have a child is a sign for their belief that it's God's displeasure, that mm -hmm. you did something wrong. It's mm -hmm. a stigma. Mm -hmm. That means you have no bloodline, no future. That is it. So she's like 10 yeah. years, after 10 years. So yes, Abraham should have lived them, but I mm -hmm. think it's the, our human frailty, yes. Yes. The, the humanness of us. But it also shows us in Galatians, it tells you in Galatians 4, verse 21 to 31, it's an allegory where Hagar represent the bond woman, represent the law, because you're not saved by law. It's not works that save you. Saved by but, um, and Sarah represent the free woman, which is Jerusalem, that faith. So it is through faith, that righteousness by faith. So they could not have done anything, but the time, as we talk about that 25 year time span. So I am like, I don't know if I put myself, if I wouldn't start to doubt to say, I mean, to your point, I'm past childbearing age. I'm, I may have been in menopause. So what's going on here, God? And God have a way, as we see through yeah. this one family, because this one family come right down to Christ. It always has some barrenness where it seemed like things stop, nothing is happening, God is silent. That's what is we're saying here. God seemed to be silent. God was silent right here. He did not communicate for 10 years, Ten years. to Abraham. That's what the lesson said. He did not communicate. He communicated with, with Hagar, but he did not communicate with Abraham or, 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 for that. And so let's, I know we have like well, few 11, minutes. 15 minutes, so let's jump over to Wednesday. Is there anything here that we need to, before we go over to Tuesday's lesson? I think we have one question, a YouTube yes. question. How does God's handling of Abraham and Sarah after they took matters in their own hands with Agar so demonstrate that. about his love and faithfulness? What lesson is there for, for believers today? So God's handling, as what Sister Gert, Gert um, talked about, that they messed up. That was like they were trying to help God out, but caused family conflict. Where we talked about Hagar despising, and the word despise was like when Michal despised David for worship because she was like Sarah's standing as the wife was now threatened because no, the band woman is with child to be the heir, but that was not God's plan. Not God's so, what she did, she went to her husband and she complained. Well, she actually blamed him, you know, and then she said, well, God will, well, God will judge, which, which Abraham told her as the master, well, do what you want to do. So she treated her harshly. This woman ran away, but God in his mercy is to your point. They mess up, but his love showed where he said, listen, you're with child. You're with a son. 
And your son also is going to be father of many. Even though he's going to be a wild man, which we're seeing the repercussions up today. What's happening in the Middle East with the Jews and the Arabs? What's going on? That's the result of what them helping or trying to help out God, where he said that Ishmael was always going to be at war with his brothers. That is what's happening. So we're seeing the repercussions, but God in his mercies also, he did bless Ishmael. It did bless Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Not only that. He, he spoke to Hagar. This is the first time in the Bible that God calls a woman by her name, Hagar. And then she was, in her response, she says, Erai. And you hear me, I love to say that. That's one of my favorite Hebrew names, the God who sees me. Because here she's running away, but you know what he did to her? He told her, he called her and tell her, you know, go back to your mistress and submit. Change your attitude. Yeah, you know, some of us can change our attitude if we realize you want to say something. No, I wanted to say Hagar was a stranger. She was not in, in Abraham's house. God still have mercy on anybody, yes, on yes, everybody yes, yes, has yes. got mercy. Yes, yes, yes. Because like yes. you just said, we said the conflict still exists, but God bless Israel. Yes. Yes. That's such a wonderful God. It, Amen. He's a merciful Amen. God. Amen. Sister Amen. Angela, you Amen. wanted to say something. And choose yeah. as a sign yeah. of the Abrahamic covenant. So we talk about the sign and some revelation I got, which was really, and I know Sister Gertrude, you're supposed to be covering Tuesday also. No. Yeah. Tuesday. No, I just wanted to say without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of None. sin. None. So we know right here, this is the covenant that um, we uh, have seen through the ages, that God um, shed his blood so that we can be redeemed. Um, and it's important to right here as you talk about that. So we see in chapter 16, for 10 years I said, God did not speak yeah. to Abraham. And I think that's a test. Isn't that a test that sometimes you pray? Isn't when you feel that God's not listening, he's just silent to test you to see exactly. what you're doing. Like you're going to do because that 10-year period, that's a dry period. Mm -hmm. But then he shows up in 17, and this yes. was just before you talk about, no, Isaac was born. This was when he changed Abraham, mm -hmm. Abraham named to, to Abraham, Abraham father which means nations. now father of many nations. Yes. So from exalted father to father of many of nations. nations. And from Sarah, I mean princess, to the, the, the same, the, the, the the same a blessing. Mm -hmm. So here it is now that it's 24 years in. Oh yes. my God, 24 years yes. in from the promise. And this, we, we, we shouldn't take this lightly. Mm -hmm. 24 years in. Long time. For the prop, long time, long time. And now he's changing their, their names because changing Sarah's name also yes. was also a shift okay. from her barrenness yeah. to be able now to bear her son. So Sister Angela, if you wanna go through with your key highlights. Yes, my highlight, it, it says here in the lesson, the meaning of circumcision has been long discussed by scholars, but because the rite of circus, circumcision involves the shedding of blood. So I just wanted to highlight that back then, that was a precursor of what was to come. Yes. Now that we have Jesus, praise God, his blood is atoning right now for us. And, and then we move into uh, the promise Wednesday. The promise. And then, you know, um, one thing also, they, it asks here, what is the spiritual and prophetic sign of the circumcision? And that is as we talk about, the, it is a seal of righteousness by faith. So it's circumcision, as you said, that no, God is not circumcising in the, in the, in the flesh. Yeah. And what I, what I learned in deeper study, that the place where the circumcision was in Abraham's body, that was really the sign of where human effort tried to help God. Oh, Do you wow, see what I'm saying? Beautiful. The place where this circumcision was, was a reminder to him of when he tried mm -hmm. to do it his way without God. So happened. when he believed God through faith, yes. this is how the righteousness comes, comes to him. So that was... That's Amen. Amen. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's just um, full, as I said, this is full, full about the future where God is. It's a, how can we learn to keep on believing even when at times that we struggle with that belief as Abraham. I put here that we, we need to go into the word of God and use it as an encouragement. You know, we have the story of, of, of Abraham, as I said, there was a 25-year time span from yeah. God gave him, Isaac was born until later on when he was almost 99, going 100 years old. And so God, as Gertrude says, he does not lie. He cannot lie, 
right? We have to take him what he says. His word is, he said, I am the Lord God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? There's absolutely nothing too hard for God. So we see here on Wednesday, the son of promise, Isaac. And Isaac, may he will laugh. And we see where Abraham laughed. Because about in the, um, on Tuesday's lesson, he talks about laughter. So Abraham laughed because he was in awe and wonder. Like from this body, from my loins, you mean? My and, and Sarah laughed also. And then Isaac, Isaac's name is, he will, he will laugh. He so God is like in his irony, like God he, does he, have will, a sense he will humor. laugh. So, Sister Angela. No, I just said God does have a sense of humor. He does have a sense of humor. He does <laughs> yeah. have a sense of humor. So we yeah. see here in 18 when he talks about the angels. So we see here we're in that time. And the law of hospitality in the ancient um, uh, culture was very important. And we see even now in the Should Middle be. East that they do that. The, um, I think when they were fighting the... Uh, the Iraqi war, and I think some, some of the U.S. soldiers, they got lost, and there was this man who actually brought them, because of the law of hospitality, brought that man in his home, and the community turned against him, but because of their custom that when someone comes in your home, you protect that person with your life. Yes. So Abraham, and I remember as a young girl about, you know, my grandparents, they always like say, you know, to be kind to strangers because you may be entertaining um, angel, uh, angels. I remember like, in my community that I grew up, you would have people walking very far distance, and they would stop by to ask for water. So my grandma just think, maybe there's an angel there, so she's sending me to the cabinet to get the best drinking glass, because you know, you better be very courteous, because you don't know if you're entertaining. So as a little child, that's, that stays with me. You no, know, I have a story like that I was thinking of this morning. I'm from Haiti. Whenever there's an earthquake, not earthquake, I mean... Um, Hurricane. I remember my mom will stay, like stand at the door, look at people's eyes. If you are passing, he'll call you. How are you doing? You and by the time for that person to say, I'm okay, she will give her some coffee and pack some food. Because she said, you don't no. know. Yeah. You don't know who are you talking. Because we may be serving angels without knowing. And this is what Abraham this is, did. This, yeah, this is amazing because here it is that God came down because he came down. Jesus Christ in the incarnate flesh condescended now because there's wickedness. He came now to go down to Sodom and because of Abraham's hospitality, yes. he says, you know, will I go about to do and not share with Abraham what I'm going to do? And by him saying that, Abraham became so passionate to say he started to barter with God yes. because he said he started at 50 because in those days, 100 people represent a whole city. Mm -hmm. 50 is 50 percent. And he was like, let me start at 50, start God. I'm going to start at 50 because yeah. far be it from you, God, far be it from you for you to destroy the wicked with the righteous. And so he bartered all the way down, and we see the spiritual significance mm -hmm. of even 10, yeah. right? Which is basically like a quorum to even start a church, a Jewish church. You know, that he went down and then God finished and, you know, went on. But it, it even tells you that when he was even bartering with God, his reverence for God. You know, like, you know, like Job, like, you know, okay, there's a sense of reverence that I am talking to God. And he knew because he called, he called the angel there Adonai which means Lord. So it, it, it tells you that this angel was different from the other two angels, but also tells you the wickedness that was going on in the earth. You know, so, and we see Lot also extending the same hospitality when he saw them coming in, the, the angels coming into the city, that he invited them to come into his, his house. Yes. And we see the Protect wickedness, them. the vileness with these, these, these men who wanted to have relations with, with, with um, the angels, so with God destroying. So we see that um, Lot in Sodom, um, that it's God's judgment on the wicked, all right? And for us now that we need as the parallels of today is that we see where God said, I'm going to come down to really see. Not that he's not omniscient. He was coming down there to really sh show the world as a witness. And we see where Lot drifted because Lot was sending out his daughters to say that. So it shows you that being in an environment of sin can also condition you or desensitize you. Yeah. Because he was, he was willing to send his daughters out to be defiled by these men. But what is very, that I like in that lesson, Lord, in Sodom, when, that the spirit of intercession for yes. Abraham. Yes. Because he's telling me, he went to God because he could have said, that's not me, I don't care. But he interested, he pleaded with God. And remember in the lesson before, he saved those people. Now he's, he's trying to save them by praying, by interceding for them. 
The question that I'm asking myself, how many times do I intercede for people do I, I don't know? I remember one time, I mean, last year, the Holy Spirit reminded me to intercede, I told you, Dion, to intercede for people that was driving before me. I don't know why, but I believe something was happening. And today, today again in the church, we need to do like Abraham, yes. intercede. Yes. Intercede Amen. not only for our families, not only for our children, Amen. but also for others. Because yes. what the world would be, where the world would be without us, without our intercession. Yes, yes. I know we don't have, we're really at the cusp of running out, but I want to read this little snippet on Friday's lesson, and then we just get final thoughts, which is so important, and it is in relation to what Sister Gert just said. In the last paragraph, he said, Sister White says, all around us are souls going down to ruin as hopeless, as, as terrible as that which befell Sodom. Every day, the probation of someone is closing. Every hour, some are passing beyond the reach of mercy, yes. and where are the voices of warning and entreaty to bid the sinner flee from the, the, this fearful doom? Where are the hands stretched out to draw him back from death? Where are those who with humility and persevering faith are pleading with God for him? The spirit of Abraham was the spirit of Christ. The son of God is himself the great intercessor in the sinner's behalf. He who has paid the price for its redemption knows the worth of the human soul. Amen. Amen. So with that, you're closing your final thought, Sister Gert. For me, the lesson, I love that lesson because it reminds me God is the God that can do the impossible. Like I said before, my, one of my favorite verses, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 22, verse 27. I am the Lord of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? Amen. If you are watching Sabbath school today, whatever you are facing right now, God can do the impossible for you. Amen. Believe it. Believe it. He can do for you the impossible. He did it for Abraham. He did it for Sarah. He did it for me. He did it for you, Dion, for Angel. He did it for many of us. He can do it again today. The, we are serving a God that can do the impossible. impossible. Amen, amen. amen. And to uh, piggyback on Sister Gertrude, uh, my takeaway is Ezekiel 33, 11. It says, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, amen. but that we should turn now and repent. Amen. So no matter where we are in our journey, let's turn back, come back to God, and he's able to heal you, restore you, and deliver you. Amen, amen. Sister Gertrude, would you close us out, please, in prayer? Oh, Heavenly Father, your children come to you. Thank you, Father, for the message today. For reminding us that you love us. You love us so much. You die for us. And you want to save us. Thank you, Daddy, for doing the impossible for us. You can do it again. Thank you for your church. Use us, Father, to spread your message of love to everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.